Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. And today, we are back at Disney's Hollywood Studios. How exciting. Yeah. So I think for today, we're going to see what new Loki merchandise has come out. Maybe swing by Indiana Jones, because it was the anniversary. Uh, what we haven't done is gotten a Ronto wrap. So I think getting a Ronto wrap would be kind of fun, too. I think we'll check out a bunch of other stuff along the way. We'll go to the shops. We'll, we'll go on a few other rides, too. But for now, I think we're going to start heading back towards Batu. So come along with us. Our first Loki merch of the day. Yeah, so this is a pin, Miss Minutes. I really like that. Brought to you by the Time Variant Authority for yeah. all time. All and that's, that's, that's limited edition, the whole series. Yeah, and then they also have this pin. Always watching the sacred timeline for all time. Always. That one's okay. I still think I like the Miss Minute a that's little cute. bit better. And there's one more, TVA, Time Variance Authority. This cracks me up because uh, in Tennessee, we also have a TVA, <laughs> Tennessee Valley Authority. So this makes me laugh. <laughs> but that's all three pins. I like them. Which one do you think we should get? Yeah, I do like Miss Minutes yeah. as well. All right, maybe, maybe we'll get the Miss Minute. I found this new Father's Day pin, 2021. It's a young Tatiana. I also like this brand new First Order pin. Look at that. Here's another Father's Day pin I found. It's a goofy one. World's greatest gorsh Don Dan. World's greatest goof. Did you find some new ears? Yeah. So these have been out for a while, but yeah. they've just recently caught my eye. I do like, I guess you would call them a rose gold. Yeah, those would match the uh, rose gold magic band that you have. Yes, they would. And I bought some new shorts as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think they're a pretty color. Yeah, I like them. You've been wanting those for a while. Yeah, I know we don't go after the ones with the bows. Sometimes I like them when they go out. Yeah. Ooh, you had a good idea. You should share it with them. So Disney, if you're watching, just a suggestion. Do you make these like regular Mickey ears? While you always come out with mini ears that have different types of accessories on them and theming, I would suggest that you come out with basically a core line of Mickey ears that are different colors and then make the bows add on accessories. So, so like that detachable? Way, yeah, they can clip on and clip off. Mm. I, I actually think in the long run, it, it would probably be a little bit more profitable. I mean, because over time, someone could buy probably more accessories and more ear variants just based on accessorizing them. So it, it's just a thought. Yeah, that's a good idea. Easy way to store all the bows instead of yeah, like a whole yeah, pair definitely. of ears. Because people literally make ear walls off of these <laughs> ears because they have so many of them. And I mean, that's all well and fine, but I mean, at the end of the day, you may only want like one pair of ears and everything else would just be an accessory. So just a thought. I love this Buzz Lightyear Spirit jersey. It's been out for a little bit. It's still $69.99. Some people might not be a total fan of it because, I mean, it is pretty loud, but it does say to infinity and beyond. I think I might pick it up pretty soon because they made a woody version of this. And quite frankly, I like the woody version way better, but they don't make it anymore. So even if they're kind of open edition shirts, they kind of come and go pretty quickly. So if you see a Spirit jersey that you like, I really would suggest picking it up while you still can. So walking into Hollywood Studios, we learned this morning that this Tuesday, Disney will no longer mandate masks, except on Disney transportation. So that's really big. We, so while we were just in the gift shop, uh, come Tuesday, if, if of course, if you're a vaccinated uh, individual, you can go without a mask. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. I think before we start to go on any rides, we are gonna grab some lunch. So heading into Batu. Let's go get some Ronto wraps. Do you ever feel sorry for a droid? This poor guy's been turning this wheel for quite some time now. So, 
we had two Ronto wraps. I also got us a Tatooine Sunset, which is not an alcoholic. It's like a really like a Arnold Palmer, so half tea, half lemonade. Yeah. And I went ahead just to show you. I asked for two cups of ice water. Like we mentioned in our previous Beat the Heat video, if you haven't watched that, go and check that out. So these are the ice waters that you can fill into your water Water bottle. Woo! Okay. The heat. It's the heat. It's, so it's getting me. Oh, oh, oh. The Ronto wrap is this. It has a pita bread, and it comes with like a uh, like a spicy sort of coleslaw on there with uh, like a pork and, and a sausage. It's it's really good. It's something a little different. If you're a fan of like uh, almost like sausage and pepper sandwiches or uh, well, even hot dogs, it, it, it's like a really super gourmet hot dog. You'll you'll love it. And up at the condiment counter, they have different things that you can add to it. One of them is barbecue sauce. And I added that the last time we had one of these, and I thought it was actually made it a little bit better in my opinion. But it's all, I would try it without and then try it with. Okay. That poor droid, he's really overworking. I mean, he's working real hard. You should see him, he's just turning and turning and turning. We're making lots of, lots of Ronto wraps. Well, that is really good. That's delicious. You could even put like a little rum in here if you're feeling frisky, you know? All right, so what is actually in this Ronto wrap? When you open it up, like Taha said, it's like a pita, a naan bread, it's light, it's fluffy. This doesn't really have too much of a taste, but it's delicious as well. This is like a piece of like a grilled pork, and it tastes just like a normal piece of pork. The slaw is where a lot of the flavor comes in. It's not like a normal coleslaw. It actually has like a, a dill tang, like a pickle slaw. And then they put like a hot sauce. So this is where a lot of the kick comes in. But I won't say that it's too spicy. And then I think this is kind of like a sausage piece. This piece is, has like a like crunchy outer coat. So like, uh, kind of like an aniline sausage when you bite into it. It kind of has a crack, not like a hot dog. But it also holds a lot of flavor. And when you mix all of those three together, it's actually pretty good. It's one I really like to do. What'd you think? It was fantastic. I, I love the Ronto wrap. I, I used to be on the fence of them when it first came out. Yeah, it's I would so say good. give it two tries. Yeah. The first time we tried it, it was a little awkward. It was a little yeah, it was know, okay. like awkward. You it don't was, know how to put all the meats together. It was kind of cold. I think that's what threw me off. And I, I kind of tasted a little gnarly to me. I wasn't the biggest fan. And but. if you're telling, like, if it, it's supposed to be a little warm, just for a little FII. So if it is a little cold, they'll remake it for you. We did that the right. first time, and we were still kind of like iffy on it. Right. We tried it the second time, and we really enjoyed it. We thought it was delicious. It could be splittable if you want it to be. Yeah. Um, today though we didn't eat breakfast, we didn't eat lunch, and it's like almost three o'clock. So yeah. we ate our own today and it was delicious. But it can be shared. And the Tatooine sunset was very good too. Yeah, I don't think it was that it was very much an Arnold Palmer. Like yeah. it wasn't overly sweet, it wasn't too sugary. And it said that it has like berry and melon in it. You could but taste it was it a but it was bit. very like yeah, it was a hint. It was a hint of berry and vanilla. It wasn't overpowering. No. So I, I thought it was really good all around. Yeah. I think definitely check out all the different restaurants here at Star Wars. It's like the normal things you're used to, but they add a little touch. Yeah, they differentiate it to make it kind of feel more like you're on planet, right? Yeah. And another thing, I noticed that they offer a plant-based option too. Oh. So, you know, if there's vegetarians or folks that don't want to eat meat, 
they make like a zucchini version of the Ronto wrap. So it, there's an option for anybody, really. There That's is. Which is kind of nice. And right next to the Ronto Roasters is Docking Bay 7. Yep. So we sometimes like to split things, like he'll get Sorry. one thing and I'll get another and we share. So if somebody's wanting to try the Ronto wrap and somebody's wanting to try a Docking Bay 7, they're right next to each other. Yeah. And I don't feel like they would mind if you brought over your Ronto wrap to eat in Docking Bay 7. I guess the last two things I would note about Docking Bay 7 is that one, you can buy sporks there, which the spork was infamous. So originally, when Batu opened, Galaxy's Edge opened, they provided sporks, but people stole them so much and they couldn't keep them in, in stock that now they sell them. They're $10.99, which isn't terrible. Also, uh, Docking Bay 7 is a little bit more of like dinner to me. So yeah. the food's a little bit more rich and it's like $15 to like $18 or like almost a barbecue plate there. So I, Ronto Roasters, more of a quick place, grab a you know Ronto wrap and head out. Docking Bay 7 is going to be fast casual. It's get in, get out, but still a little bit more formalized, right? Right. So, uh, next thing that I did was I stopped by uh, Doc Ondar's and I put my name down for the virtual queue to see the Legacy lightsabers. I heard there was a restock, so I am curious what they do have. The cast member didn't tell me, but I, I guess that's the surprise. So we'll see, we'll see what's back in there again. I like this. I like this at at Black Spire Outpost bag. Isn't that cool? Put that in our book bag. That sign's really neat, isn't it? We decided to get a blue milk. It, it's been a bit. We're finally able to try a blue milk. We haven't had this in such a long time. I, I almost forgot what this tastes like. It's not bad. It kind of reminds me of cotton candy. It kind of has a cotton candy taste to it. A little bit of coconut. In the past, I liked the green milk better than the blue. I just haven't had the blue milk in probably a year. It's not bad. Yeah, it does have, it does taste like something I just can't like pinpoint it, but it's fruity. Yeah, the green milk, I think I would describe as being like, uh, kind of like earthy tasting. I, I, I know it doesn't necessarily give a great description, but I think it, it's kind of like a natural earthy flavor. And it's kind of like a blend between a slushy and a milkshake. So it has like kind of a thickness to it as you can see. It's not like water as watery as a slushy. Yeah. And it kind of has like the thickness, the smoothness of a of a milkshake. Yeah, I'd really suggest it. It's only it's $7.99. It's a little pricey, but if you're not coming here very often or if you just want to try something different, it's it's not terrible for Disney. No. Yeah. And I would also say like <laughs> find somewhere, stand and drink it. Like don't the more it melts, in my opinion, the less I like it. Yeah, yeah it, once it gets watery, yeah, it's a little, a little funky. One shop we haven't visited in quite a while is Troy Depot. So I think we'll pop in there and see what's new and uh, what else has been added to the store. It's probably been a couple months. One thing that I really like that Droid Depot started to do is actually offer spare parts. So if you do come here and build a droid, you can always buy additional parts you can swap out at home, which I think is really nice. What'd you find, Shanae? I have a cute little uh, kid's shirt. It's Look reflective it's too, which is kind of cool. Oh yeah. So you can kind of see on there a little bit. Little sleeves all turned up. So cute. <laughs> Those are nice. Yeah. I, I think I like the blue one. It, it almost, it looks bluey here, but it almost looks a little purple on camera. Yeah, but, it's kind of 
a different blue yeah. to be honest. It's like a mix. Hey, that matches the one we did. That is R2, and it does look like uh, the droid we built. Yeah. BB-8? Even a BB-8. These are nice little headbands. It's something a little bit different than the uh, than the normal Mickey ears. So if you're a Star Wars fan and you want to have like something special, this is kind of a nice little option. And I know that they light up, and they make little noises. Oh, how fun! <laughs> oh, there it goes. I guess it's quick communications from this droid. Yeah. Oh, so it, it must it must be like motion activated maybe a little bit? No. Kind of. That's yeah. cute. So you can do just the light or you can do sound with the light. <laughs> <laughs> that is cute. I really like this little guy. Look at it, it's a little flashlight keychain. So it's got the one normal light, and then it does all three. He's a little nifty guy. It's twelve ninety nine. You could do the whole kitchen. We could do the whole kitchen. So they have plates. Ooh, these are breakable, folks. So be careful. Yeah, it's definitely breakable. Uh, I like towels. the uh, the dish towels. Hey, they did a really good job, like on the embroidery there. Yeah. Yeah. You I got a cutting board. Down here you have a little. It's like a little heater. Track. Yeah. Now, I think my personal favorite. It's the R2-D2 bowl. This thing is like a brick. I mean, it is. That thing is heavy. $74.99. This thing is really heavy. Oh, that's like a spoon holder. Yeah. I mean, that's cool. <laughs> it's like you really could. You could deck out your whole kitchen. They even have aprons. Troy yeah. Depot aprons. So are these lounge fillers or not? I don't know. They kind of look like they are, but I don't, I don't think so. No. I don't think so either. They usually have like the, uh, the, the logo. logo. Yeah. But they certainly fit the book. Maybe it's just like a white label version. But it says Black Spire Outpost, which is really cool. I kind of like that. Yeah, they have another one right over here as well. Looks like we found the alternative blue style. <laughs> This is really nice too. It even has a, uh, a matching wallet. It is $39.99. But aren't these kind of neat too? If you have a little girl, they have these hair bows. Oh, nice. And they have jewelry. Now, this isn't as expensive as the jewelry that's over in Doc Ondar's. That is like really expensive. They have like $2,000 necklaces over there. Let's see. Yeah, these are only uh, like $19.99 for a necklace. Those earrings are kind of nice. It's $14.99. I like those. Those are cute. Next door to the smaller Droid Depot shop is the actual assembly area where you can construct your own droid. Now, Shanae and I have done this in the past, and it's really a fun experience. It's about $100, and it's something you can bring home that I know your kids, or even the kid at heart and Star Wars fan, was, would really, really enjoy. So just added, they've included an R-Series accessory panel set for Pride Month. And here's a demo. So like we were mentioning in our Beat the Heat video at Magic Kingdom, Rain can move in pretty quickly here in Central Florida. And guess what? We just got a passing shower. So we decided to seek some shelter in the marketplace here in Batu. And I think it gives us a good idea to just go from shop to shop and see what else is new. So I just stepped into the Black Spire Outpost stall and I came across this Millennium Falcon patch set. Now, if you remember the other video we were at the Disney character outlet, we found a very similar set to this that was on sale. Again, it's an important reason why it's very good to kind of shop around and just take a take a mental note of what you're looking at as you're going through Disney. Nevertheless, they have really interesting gifts here. And if you want a t-shirt or a hat or even a pin set, they have a little bit of everything. You can even get throws. So just stopping by the Outpost popcorn stall, it's not open. And it hasn't been open since July when the parks reopened because of the pandemic. I'll be curious when this returns. They do have a really cool repair droid uh, popcorn bucket that you can get here. It's about $20, but this also does count towards your popcorn refill bucket. 
So it will be nice to finally get the flavored popcorn back into that too. The rain has stopped. And fortunately, we also got a text that our slot became open at Doc Ondar's. So we're gonna head over and check out the Legacy lightsabers. Just inside Doc Ondar's, we found a couple of hidden Mickeys. There's an upside down one. And there, there's another one. Here's a new piece of artwork that we just came across, Grand Admiral Thrawn. And this was done by Kevin John Jasinski. He also made this really awesome watercolor of Darth Vader. This is, this is really neat. If you're new to Galaxy's Edge, you'll learn very quickly that kyber crystals are very important in this neck of the woods. They come in two flavors, one with a silver cap and one with a gold. The silver cap ones are more of your standard kyber crystals. This is going to change the hue of the lightsaber that you construct at Salvi's workshop. Alternatively, alternatively, you'll find ones with gold caps. These are called Force Guidance Kyber Crystals, and they are used inside of the Sith and Jedi holocrons. These will actually allow the holocrons to talk to you. So the red ones are Darth Vader, and the green ones are Yoda. Here's a Sith holocron. They're $49.99. I'm, I'm not sure if uh, this is something I've really been bought off on yet. Also noting, this is what the Jedi holocron looks like. Again, $49.99. Hey Doc, I see you got some more lightsabers in. No? Okay. Here in Doc Ondar, they really have some high-end stuff. Look at this necklace, $2,000. So it looks like they've definitely restocked lightsabers here. They now have eight variations you can purchase. And they're bringing more, wow, they're stocking up. So right now you can buy the Obi-Wan lightsaber, Kylo Ren, Ben Solo, Rey Skywalker. Uh, looks like they have the Leia, the Luke Skywalker reforged, Darth Maul, and also, what's the last one there? Oh, it, the Luke Skywalker from the uh, Return of the Jedi. The Darth Maul? Yes. So when you buy that, do you have to buy two? Yes, so if you want to make it double, you have to buy two. Okay. I actually see that. It's the only one I really yes. want to see. Do you want to see that? Yeah, the dark. Right here. Ah. Yeah. And that is in the 26th. We'll, we'll, we'll check the whole thing. So does this come with like a half? Yes, so there'll be. Okay. Half right here. Yeah, so it comes with this piece right here. So that'll come with it, and then you can buy two of the hilts, and you'll be able to see them together. In order to have the double. Alright. Okay. So, you're going to get an AP discount only for the saber. You got the help. Yeah. Okay. The only thing I don't care for about that one is you have to basically buy it too. So, it's $150. So, to buy the complete Dark Ball lightsaber is $300. So. And you don't get, and you don't get an AP discount on it either. So when you buy this one, does it come up? Yes, it does. Okay. So with those ones that you get the packaging, you'll have the hilt on top and underneath. And the belt clip for this one is also included. And I have to say, there was more lightsabers there this time than the last. There was. Now they've restocked on some of the uh, more of the villains. So they had Darth Maul. They had Kylo Ren. I like the Kylo Ren lightsaber. <laughs> that one was really cool. Uh, real close to buying. Yeah, yeah, I was on the fence. But it seems like, so that one was $159. So for the money, it seems like you've got a little bit more. Like it already came with the two little blades, which I feel like it should, but it just seemed a little more beefy for the money. Now, I liked Darth Maul. Darth Maul is my favorite Sith. Like, I feel that he was poorly, poorly handled in The Phantom Menace. But anyway, that's another day, that's another topic, another story. I liked his lightsaber. 
what I didn't like about the lightsaber was that you had to buy two of them to make the real Darth Maul lightsaber. So you're talking three hundred dollars just to make the Darth, or just to buy the Darth Maul lightsaber. So I think for now, we're gonna skip it. I'll think about it. We're obviously restocking. I think what we'll do is we're gonna keep going through Toy Story Land and stop at the Toy Story Mania. We checked my Disney Experience app. It's 25 minutes. Let's go do that. I feel so small. Can we escape out of the window? Styling. Styling and profiling. You ready? I am ready. Let's go break some plates. Let's go break some plates. One of the main reasons why I wanted to come to Hollywood Studios today is for a very specific anniversary. Just over my shoulder might give you a little bit of an indication what that anniversary is. So 40 years ago today, June 12th, 1981, Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark premiered. So I wasn't born yet. However, if there was a series of movies that I loved when I was growing up and still do to this day, was Indiana Jones. In my opinion, it squeaks out Star Wars, which is big. But 40 years ago today, Harrison Ford, Dr. Indiana Jones, Jr. premiered. And right behind me is the Indiana Jones epic stunt spectacular. And as a kid, I loved seeing the show. Now, unfortunately, the sign does say no performances today. And there hasn't been performances, not since the park closed down last March. So one of these days, I'm really looking forward to seeing that this show comes back. I don't know when, hopefully by October 1st. We do have a park reservation for October 1st. So a couple of things I'm looking forward to. Hopefully the return of Indiana Jones, Epic Stunt Spectacular, Remy's Ratatouille, and celebrating on Main Street USA. So I, just a lot's going on and I'm looking forward to it. During the quarantine, this was being used as a relaxation area. Now it's just sitting vacant. So I'm not sure, again, when this is coming back, but as things start to reopen, boy, do I really hope to see Indy again soon. There you go. Oh, I have a fright flip valuable artifact down here. Oh no, I had a terribly valuable artifact down here. I say, leave off the rip, old chap. Be a jolly good sport there. All right, we'll leave you alone. Continuing on with some Indiana Jones history. So, Disney's Hollywood studio started off as really a working production studio. That was Michael Eisner's original vision for the Florida park. At the time, they started bringing in actual props from different movies, Indiana Jones being one of them. This tank is the tank that's from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. So if you look at, uh, I found a picture online. Kinda, let's see if I can get that. Let's clarify it all. So there's a, there's a still of the tank with some of the actors standing next to it. That, that is the tank from the movie. So as you can tell, it's sort of broken down over time. A lot of the parts that are made to look like metal but are actually wood and foam. So you can see the weathering, but it's right off from Echo Lake. If you're, if you're dining at either the 50s Primetime Cafe or Hollywood and Vine, make your way up towards Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular. There's a little path to your left. Head down the path and you'll find the tank. This also puts you at the back exit to the Stunt Spectacular show. So another vehicle that I want to show that's right next to the tank from Last Crusade is this truck. So it is documented that this truck was used in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. So even though it's the anniversary of Raiders of the Lost Ark, these are two Indiana Jones screen used props that you can see here at Hollywood Studios. Sinead, do you know what time it is? What time is it? It's Rise of the Resistance time. <laughs> our, boarding views, our boarding group's been called. Let's go do this.
attention all on board. This ship is now under the command of the First Order. You will exit the ship and proceed down the hallway to interrogation. Everybody, get out. It, it just never gets old. Look at this. It's incredible. Is this where we call for room service? Take this corridor to the triple list, then head down to the escape pod base. Those droids are programmed to return you to Batu. Hurry and don't get caught. Did it work? Good. Now get a move on. Wow. I, I mean, made it. chills, made it, tears, chill, you know, gooseys, however you want to <laughs> say it. It's it's not fake. Every time I ride that ride, it's... No. We we're, yeah. we're get really lucky. We make it out every time. It's because you're going to work as a team, folks. Yeah, yeah you got to work as a team. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, but we made it. We got R5. We survived it once again. R5 yes. R got us out of there. He was talking to us all along the way. Yeah. So a little R5 reacts on the ride as well. Yeah. So when Kylo Ren comes on to the scene, he's like, you're going to tell me the location of the resistance. Your little droid will be like, no! You know, yeah, but it's, it's its own little language. So watch out for those little help. That makes me crack up along the ride. Yeah, he's super, he's super cute. <laughs> the whole thing. If you can, try to see if you can get, uh, get a first row seat. I mean, it really does make the difference. I think now that we're off of Rise, we need to calm down. We're a little worked up. Yeah, Still, I mean, we just... We defeated Kylo Ren. Yeah, well, Stormtrooper. Well, we, we well, just escaped. escaped. We escaped. escaped, yeah. I think we worked up a good thirst, right? Yeah, where are we going to go? So from here, we're going to go to Baseline, and we're going to try maybe, uh, maybe a Cerveza of sorts. Yeah. Off planet, of course. <laughs> and I don't know, we'll take a look at the appetizers and see what they have. And now we're at Baseline. We've been able to sit down, relax. We've ordered a beer flight take our masks off, and just kind of people watch. Show them what we got, Jermaine. Look at that beer flight. It's all craft beer. Again, Baseline specializes in craft beers. And they also have a couple of small plate selections, too. So if you're just in the mood to, like, snack, they look really good. What are some of the options? Um, they have a pretzel, the big, you know, Mickey pretzels. They also have a charcuterie board that you can try as well. Those are the top two that I normally see everybody getting. Yeah. Um, if you want to bring your kids here as well, just across the way, they always keep a little snack stand behind us, like going to Batu. Um, they have ice cream and popcorn, but the kids like pretzels here as well. Yeah. Um, they also have non-alcoholic drinks too. So this is a good time just in this little area. All the tables are pretty much shaded during the day or towards the end of the day. Um, it's a good stopping, take a break, gather yourselves, or if you need to kill some time for your ride, this is a great option. 
first on our list is the delicious IPA. All right, let's see if it stacks up to its namesake. You right? should taste a fruity citrus character with a burst of hops. Well, that's good. Did you taste a fruity citrus character? It's a little, there's like a little punch at the end. At, at fir on first, it's very hoppy, like, like an IPA should be. And then you have a little punch of fruit at the end, which is nice. It dry. It, it actually finishes very smooth. That is hoppy. Yeah, it's a little tart. Hip hop, hip hop, 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 IPA. Okay, let's try the next one. Okay, so the next one is from <laughs> Sierra Nevada. This is called crazy little thing called IPA. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Kyle. This is an unfiltered. Oh, like my mouth. <laughs> fruit forward pop adventure loaded with notes of passion fruit, apricot, pineapple, and citrus. You definitely get the uh, apricot. Apricot. You definitely get the apricot. Apricot, apricot. Apricot, apricot, tomato, tomato. Mm. This smells like it. It's like, it's a little smoky. If that makes sense. Ooh, yeah. Like it's got a little like smoke to the end of it. Does that make sense? I like this one. You like that one more? Yeah. See, I like the first one better. Okay, you take the first one. So you take and that I'll take and I'll the take second. this. This is go. the good thing about getting Cheers. the flight. Okay. It's just season. Oh, it's the uh, Sierra Nevada. I think it was called Summer Breeze Season. Summer Breeze. It's a session. It's a session makes beer. Me It's uh, supposed to be a little... This doesn't have any um, description. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, there it is. Okay, so it's called the Summer Break Session AZ IPA. It's 4.6% alcohol. So usually session beers are a little lighter. Yeah. It, it, well, in color and in alcohol. And it is hazy. Yeah. What do you think of that one? Good as well. I, I still like. I don't know if you like that one as much. Yeah. I haven't cropped made my mind up about that one. That one's okay. It's it's along the same lines. That one's okay. It's along the same lines of the uh, the hazy little thing, except it's just a little lighter. Yeah, I can't really make my mind up about yeah. it. Well, again, it's a session, so it's not as it's, it's not going to be as dark as the uh, the regular hazy IPA. So, so the last one, I, I like this one. If you like, if you if you I've had this beer before. If you like light beer, like if you or, or, um, like a Corona or like a Heineken or a Bud or a Corona fan, get this beer. That this is the best option for a light beer. And that's the uh, what is it? The Cal the Cerveza. Yeah. Yeah. Golden, Golden Road State. Brewing Company. Golden State Cerveza. Golden State Cerveza. Yeah. This is a light Mexican style lager that is bright, crisp, and refreshing with a taste or with a twist of citrus. Yeah, that one's. We that's went delicious. down the citrus route today. Yeah. Well, we are in Orange County. That's true. That's true. Got a got a. Throwing out there to the uh, to the oranges. <laughs> no, you don't like that one. You like Corona too. I'll take it on with sip. I'm not changing my mind, but yeah, that's kind of a hard one to uh, end with because you kind of yeah. you went from I would say the most bitter to yeah, I the went lightest. the opposite direction. You can tell I'm a beer connoisseur here. This is what I like about coming here too, because you can just get one of these and drink it by itself, or you can get a nice beer flight, and it's right in the middle of Hollywood Studios. So as you sit here, you have uh, Muppet Land, so Muppet, you know, Vision 3D's right there in Batu. Right over here is like Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. So you're kind of like at the four corners of a lot of these attractions, including Star Tours right over there. So you can watch folks go by, and the kids could eat like a Mickey bar, and mom and dad could have a much needed cerveza. <laughs> <laughs> so, or a couple. Yeah. Mommy needs a little break time. 
<laughs> yeah. It, Shanae and I, we don't have any kids, but, you know, we just kind of like to relax at a park and enjoy ourselves, people watch. And, you know, whether you do or, or, or do not have kids, like they always say, it, it's kind of like, it's just a relaxing spot at, at an otherwise pretty hectic location. Yeah, so. this is also just, you don't have to sit here either. You can grab and go. Yeah. So like I said earlier, these are just like a sampler. So if you're not into beer, you don't know really which one you like, I feel like this is a great one to go into. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do know which one you like, the bigger, like just getting a normal size beer here is quite big. Yeah. I think it's the best deal in the park, actually. So if you were going to buy a beer, I, I would buy it here, the big, because I think you get a bigger size. Yeah. Or in my brain, I just feel like it, it does. Um, and you can just take it and walk around the park now. Right. So out of all of our choices here, I think I would choose the Sierra Nevada Hazy Little IPA. It's a good choice. I think for me personally, I would probably go with the Stone Brewing Delicious IPA. Like that's that's that a solid one? West Coast heavy IPA. That's no, this one down here. Oh, it's this one. one. So it's the first one. It's that guy. It's a little more on the amber side. It's like more like a Credit. yeah. But if it's hot, like I said, if it's hot and you just want to drink a beer, get this this Golden uh, Golden Road Brewing Cerveza. This is good. <laughs> popcorn bucket. <laughs> popcorn. You're not with this popcorn. <laughs> Ten dollar <laughs> refill. <laughs> if you've never tried this popcorn bucket, I, I hope I'm enticing you just a little bit. Folks, I'm gonna just gonna take a moment to say we've never been this fanatical about popcorn before. This is kind of a new thing for us here. <laughs> I guess it's a little bit of trial by fire, but you know, just just don't judge us on. The amount of popcorn <laughs> we have been purchasing and consuming. And hey, I'll be honest, we don't eat it uh, all in one day. Uh, but I feel like if you had a kid, man, it's a great option. We don't eat it all in one day. We eat it no. more in like within an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I have ate it like the, the next day or two days and it's still pretty good. Which leaves me a little bit airy about. Well, what does that say about the popcorn? It's magical. So we just stopped into the fashion spot. If you're gonna find Marvel and Star Wars gear on Hollywood Boulevard here, it's gonna be in the fashion spot. So let's have a look around to see what new Loki gear we can find. So we already found our first shirt. This is cool. Yeah. I like it, it's almost like a, it's like a felt kind of material. Yeah, yeah that's really it is. neat. And then I'll put my hand through it so you can kind of like see the... Yeah. It's a it's little see-through, but it's, it's a light, it's a very thin shirt. Yeah. It's very thin. But it's a little different, I like that. Yeah, it's got a pocket. Yeah. TVA. <laughs> I know, every time I see this, I still think of Tennessee Valley Authority, yeah, but it, it, it... It's gonna take our brains a moment. Yeah, one of these days. So they also have a Loki Special Collector Edition action figure. I know, it's a debit card. It is. $29.99. The indie gear, we found it. It is growing. Look at it. They have swords. And they have the hat. They have the hat. I have always wanted that hat, but my head is far too big to fit in this hat. It, uh, one of these days. One of these days. <laughs> hey, Mick. Or shall I say, Junior? So we just left the fashion spot. As far as Loki gear goes, there was an action figure. Yeah. There was the TVA shirt. 
And then over at the black or at the dark room was uh, the pins. They had the exclusive limited edition pins. They have a set of ears. Yes. But they're sold out. We asked the cast member because we were going to come over and check out uh, the, the other gift shop, Fashion Extras, Disney and Company. It's not really worth it because they're sold out here. Now, another spot that we may check, but probably not for today's video, is Disney Springs. They were there the last several times we've been into World of Disney. So yes. if you're on the hunt for the new ears, I would go there first. We found a haunted mansion wallet. I haven't seen this one. I kind of like it. Zerd popper. I need this to pop you in the face. It's not very nice. He is cute. Is he not adorable or what? Oh, uh, his little friend is cute too. Oh, look at the Porg. Oh. This is like major version. That's, I, I'm, I'm thinking the Ewok is pretty, cute. pretty cute. Oh, which one would you guys get? He has a choice. My, my vote's the Ewok. He is $26.99. That's not bad. No. And you get 20% off that, too. Yeah. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for today. So we had a lot of fun, didn't you, Shanae? We did, yes. Yeah, so we went to Disney's Hollywood Studios. We did quite a bit, even in a short period of time. We came a little late, but we were able to go to Baseline and try the beer flight, which that was really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the point there was just like, it's it, it's nice to sample some things sometimes, relax, people watch, enjoy yourself, and then mix in like the thrilling Disney rides, like Rise of the Resistance, what you, what you saw. Yeah, we got to see some new merchandise for yeah. the Loki. If you haven't checked out the new episode, I would suggest to watch it. Yeah, the new episode was a lot of, was really good. Like, I, yeah. I was also reading that this was the biggest premiere on Disney Plus for a Marvel, like for a Marvel series. Now, pretty, pretty cool. like growing up, I wasn't into the comics. Like I didn't read the comics. My mother did when she was growing up as a child and you read them growing up. Yes. And so I know we you were already answer. into the Marvels. But I think with what they're doing with these new Marvel editions, like movies and the remakes, I have, they've drawn me into Marvel. Yeah, you know, they're doing a really good job bringing out these series. So it's a continuation of all the movies that I think have been very popular for Disney. And since the buyout, they're trying really hard to keep the, the Marvel series going along. So I think, yeah. I think it's, Loki is a good progression. Yeah, and I, I can't I like wait the, to see where it goes. And I like the little tie-in that we have, like locally, where we have the time variance, <laughs> and yet we were the Tennessee Valley Association. So it's just like the TVA thing's kind of cool. So we did end up I buying the t-shirt. I could pass that up. Yeah, yeah. so I did, a, I did buy the, the TVA t-shirt, the time variance t-shirt. Yeah. Of course, because it matched my ears that I bought today as well. Yeah. So I'm I'll be rocking this. those in a video to come. Yeah. You know, I think for tonight, we're going to enjoy this beautiful evening here in Central Florida. We might even go back to the Riviera, believe it or not. But, you know, we're just going <laughs> to kind of mosey on. So yeah. we appreciate you watching. If you did like it, hit subscribe and also the notification bell. So that way you know when we have a new video or if we go live. Also, like us too and follow us on, uh, on Instagram. So until then, bye. Hey, Kyle. Hey, Shanae. Do you want to know Indiana Jones' least favorite band? What's his least favorite band? The Rolling Stones. <laughs> that's a good one. That's it's theme for one. this. It's theme for the show here, folks. Let's do it. That's your best one yet. I like.